Good morning Philippines. Good afternoon. Good evening America. This is your regular broadcast once again. <coughs> Re Restoration Mysteries of God coming from Manila, Philippines and the broadcast group of uh, Kogeo End Time Series. Uh, please uh, invite listeners, foreigners, friends, acquaintances. Join us in this one hour of uh, Bible study. We're continuing from the subject of uh, the Godhead. And uh, we are uh, discussing, we discussed yesterday the different beliefs in the Godhead. Where did I put the copy? Oh, here it is. The different beliefs in the Godhead. <clears throat> Trinity, Oneness, Arianism, Unitarianism, Subordinationism. And today we're going to discuss, this is the tabulation that we used yesterday. Godhead tabulation, if you wish to download a copy. Today we will this, uh, talk about the wheel of prophecy and the Christological wheel. This is the Christological wheel. I hope <coughs> everything is clear. If it's blurred, let me know. There are questions, just comment them. If you share this to other posts, uh, please... Uh, If you share this to other posts, please comment, list, uh, list it in the comment section. <clears throat> Christological wheel and wheel of prophecy. Take this time to share to other brethren, you know. So, <clears throat> let's begin with an opening prayer. Lord, we thank you this morning for this uh, glorious opportunity here in Manila um, that uh, we could deliver your word. We cleanse your servant, put him behind thee, and uh, <clears throat> please... Uh, Anoint the hearts and minds and ears of your brethren, your children that will hear this broadcast and convict them, Lord. Give us wisdom and revelation, Lord. For for all your uh, uh, fruits in the last days that you have restored and you will reveal for the perfection of your bride saints. Bless you, Lord. Bless the brethren. 
that will be listening and even your servant that will carry your word. <clears throat> All these things we ask and pray in the precious name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> now, uh, yesterday we talked about the Godhead tabulation. To, yesterday we I mentioned the Christological wheel. I said this will be my discussion. I never broadcasted this before, whether radio or in the church. Never preached this in the church. So, uh, before, since this is related, I'd like to uh, share also the Wheel of Prophecy. This is the Wheel of Prophecy. The Wheel of Prophecy was made <clears throat> during the Pentecostal era about uh, shall we call uh, about the Godhead in trying to refute the Trinity so uh, I'm gonna go through this first before we talk about the Christological wheel I made a different title for that the Christological wheel uh, if it's blurred please uh, let me know by comment. If it's clear, let me also know by comment so that I'll be assured. <laughs> so, um, let's talk about the Wheel of Prophecy first. Here in the Wheel of Prophecy, you notice that uh, there is prophecy about God in the right side. God the Creator, God the Redeemer, God the Shepherd, God the King, God the I Am, God the First and the Last, God the Rock, God is Coming. So, of course, there are many scriptures on that uh, we don't have time to go to each and every one of them it, you can just search it in Google the wheel of prophecy you can see the scriptures there now look at their counterpart this is how they approach uh, to to debunk the Trinity it in each uh, counterpart they put Jesus there Jesus the Creator Jesus the Redeemer, Jesus the Shepherd, Jesus the I Am, Jesus the First and the Last, Jesus the Rock, and Jesus is Coming, counterpart, God, and okay, so uh, it's a lengthy subject to go to each and every one of this. But suffice it to say, there are also scriptures they can point to regarding Jesus. So, uh, the simple thing they will say, how many creators are there? How many, uh, who is coming? God the Father is coming. How, uh, how many rock are there? How many first and lasts? That is just a simple question to the Trinitarian. And of course, the answer is there is just one. One creator, one God, one first and the last, one I am, one shepherd. So, one Lord. So, uh, they can easily uh, refute the Trinitarian that uh, believes in two different persons. The two different persons of... Uh, Three different persons of one God. So, um, that's how the wheel of prophecy works. And if I would comment, um, I've encountered this wheel of prophecy during my youth in my previous church with my pastor, Pastor Villagonza. And, um, of course, uh, he's not very much aware of this. And he has no explanation for this. 
when I encountered this, I read this in a like a newsletter from the End Time Message. And uh, of course, the Wanda Pentecostals would claim that Brother Barnum just copied this from them. It doesn't matter since a majority of the message believers have a similar explanation with the oneness. But um, let me just answer, uh, give a explanation because the, this is related, this uh, illustration is being used by the oneness group, okay? Oneness Pentecostals, uh, even message believers. So let us uh, give some conclusions. Uh, uh, the traditional explanation is Jesus Christ is God the Father Himself. He's that same one God, okay? So, let me give a comment that in the Bible, Jesus the Son of God, there's nothing wrong with the word Jesus here. You know why? The, word, the name Jesus is also the name of the Father. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Singular name. The name of the Father and the name of the Son is the same. So there's no problem with this illustration. Although in the scripture, some are referring to the Son himself. But we're just talking about the name here, here in the circle, the Jesus. Jesus is coming, Jesus the rock, the first and the last, Jesus the I am, Jesus the king, Jesus the shepherd, Jesus the redeemer and savior. So, Jesus is the name of God the Father, which He gave to His Son. That's written in the Bible, Philippians 2, 6. Now, here you get a clue how you um, answer this. If there's one God, uh, there's one rock, Jesus is that rock. So there's first and the last, Jesus is that first and the last. How do you answer this um, except to say that he is Jesus Christ is God the Father himself. Now to answer this, the scripture answers that God has invested all that he has to the Son. And what the Son has, God, the Son even invested all that he has to the church. So this was our illustration yesterday. How God, the fullness of God, indwelt the Son bodily. And not just given him a name which is above every name, given him power and authority. Those scriptures could not be ignored. That is the simple answer. That's why Brother Branham said, I am not a oneness. Uh, God is not one like your finger is one. There's one God the Father, and he uh, sent his son, Jesus Christ. His son, Jesus Christ, is not him, but God is in him. God is in him. If God is in him, then that's the answer. How could Jesus Christ be the rock? The How could Jesus Christ be that rock, that king, that first and the last, that shepherd? Because Jesus Christ, God is in Jesus Christ. Using Jesus Christ, because we cannot see God. So God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. That's a simple answer. The fullness of the Godhead bodily, it dwelt in the Son. That's the simple answer. So, um, that goes against traditional teaching that he is another person, God, or Christ is the Father himself. If God the Father can dwell his Son and manifest himself through the Son, that is the answer of why the counterpart is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Now we move on to the Christological wheel. I hope this is clear. I need your comments if this is unclear. So I will draw it. The only blurry is your tablet. Oh my goodness. The only blurry is your tablet. Small letter cannot see the letter. Okay. Is, it, uh, is this uh, blurry? Just let me know by comment if this uh, track is blurry. Clear? Oh, it's clear. Okay, so thank you for that information. So um, let's take note 
this is what I call a Christological wheel. Yesterday we talked about the various uh, uh, teachings in the Godhead, uh, Trinitarians, uh, Oneness, Arianism, Unitarianism, Subordinationism. So they are all written here. So let me mark them out. I hope I have a highlighter. I didn't prepare them. So this is Arianism. This is Unitarianism. This is Oneness. This is Trinity. This is Subordinationism. Now let's talk about common ground. The common ground of... Uh, the the common ground of trinity and subordination is that they both believe in three persons in one god that subordinationism uh, the difference between an outright trinitarian with a subordinationist is that uh in Trinity, they are all co-equal. So let me just draw it here. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are co-equal, co-eternal. Not No one is above the other. In the subordinationism, the Father is greater than the Son. And the son also mentioned that in the Bible. My father is greater than I. And the Holy Spirit was sent from both of them. So the Holy Spirit is more subordinate to them. So that is subordinationism. But you see here, they have a common ground. These are different categories, but they're together. They're side by side because they have a common ground. You see this white line here. I hope you download this. I hope this is still in the track. Uh, files in Progressive Revelation Ministry. If you wish to have a copy of this, uh, this is uploaded in the track in uh, uh, Progressive Revelation Ministry group, okay, the file section, uh, under Godhead Tabulation. This is the name of the track, Godhead Tabulation. At the back is Christological Wheel. I hope Brother Ferdinand did not remove the the, the 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 back uh, uh, the back of the track making only the first part uh, we're not yet all electronic so we need the back part if you print out the track you need to print out the back part so that the back part is not blank so you notice subordinationism and trinitarianism Christ Christ is God okay they have a common ground it's actually it's not just the two of them the boundary is here between Aaronism. It extends to the oneness. See there? The oneness, Christ is the same. It's God. The difference between a Trinitarian and a, and, and a oneness is how did Christ become God? Uh, to the Trinity or subordinationist, Christ is God, the Son. But to the oneness, Christ is God the Father. So, but they both say Christ is God. They're just cousins, actually. They have some explanations that are similar. Example, uh, when God, uh, be, uh, God became man. So, let's use this illustration. God supposedly becoming man. When God became man, it's similar to like a theophany. In the Theophany, I, gr I agree with them. God appearing as a man. But, of course, they will explain the same way with Jesus Christ. God becoming man. So, whether Trinitarian or Oneness, they have the similar uh, explanation. Now, why do... So, by the way, someone remarked to me in a comment, uh, you don't have to be intellectual. You must not have to be intellectual. That's dangerous. Maybe he's referring to the fact that uh, we study the details here of different uh, teachings. Now, the question is, 
Do we need to study all the details of these teachings? Do we need to scrutinize every bit of doctrine? The answer is yes. In the Bible, God commands us so. We must not be lukewarm, complacent, that uh, just spoon-feed everything that the pastor says. We, the, the, even the prophet taught us to go back to the Word and prove all things. That's what the Bereans did in Acts chapter 17. They had a ready mind to listen and look up the Scriptures whether those things were so. So, um, the, we should not be complacent and why do we have to prove or disprove? Why do we not need to do no, no, know the details? If you don't know the details, you cannot prove or disprove what is truth, what is right, what is wrong, what, what, what part is right, what part is wrong. But the scripture commands us to do so in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14. That um, strong meat belongeth to them that are of age who is able to discern truth from error, right from wrong. And even Paul uh, rebuked those who did not grow in the knowledge of the word. They become babies. Uh, verse 12, Hebrews 5.12, By that time ye, ye ought to be teachers. Ye have need, one should give you the milk of the word again. Like babies, you need the, the uh, sincere milk of the word again. They never groan, but goes. Uh, uh, they never strive. Of course, that's part of our ministry. We have to make our disciples grow in the Word. We need to teach the details. We need to t tell them to hear others and prove all things by the Scriptures. Instead of just ignoring others and closing your minds and just believing what your pastors say or your preachers say. That's the reason why the prophet called us out from the denominations, out from the religious system, religious organization system, because those are the traditional systems of man. Just be content to what your leader says. Don't ask questions. That's the very meaning of Nicolaitanism. What is Nicolaitanism? Let me write it here. Nicolaitanism is conquering the laity. If you just focus on Nicholas, if you just focus on Nicholas, then you lose the meaning because he teach people to be corrupt. But focus on the Greek word Nico in Tenos, which is conquering the laity. How do you conquer the laity? Out of ignorance. That's why Christ said, The truth shall set you free. Seek ye for the truth, for the truth shall set you free. So we are believers already. You are converts in the church. Should you stop being barren? Should you stop proving all things? You, you're making a great grave mistake. As though, it's like Judas. You, you believe in the, at the beginning, but you stop walking in further light. The light of God's word is progressive. So you need to know. God did not preserve those dynasties of denominations for you to ignore. God play, allowed them to flourish so that you could prove all things by comparing Scripture from, from Scripture. That's the purpose of God, not to ignore. That's the greatest mistake the religious world uh, uh, is teaching the believers. Uh, do not be intellectual. Do not... Uh, let me let me uh, let me explain the word intellectual or human head knowledge, similar to head knowledge. If you focus on the intellectual side, the head knowledge side, it means you're also not Berean because you just memorize what your pastor preacher tells you. Intellectualism and head knowledge applies more to those Nicolaitans than those Bereans. But, of course, the devil is deceiving people to make it in reverse, to, ma uh, to paint a picture in reverse that uh, if you prove all things, you study the details, then you are intellectual. No. You, because you love God's word, you prove all things. Uh, what does First Peter, uh, excuse me if I digressed a, moment, a bit because of focusing on this. First Peter chapter 3, verse 15. 
Prepare an answer to those to those who seek you to know your faith. What if someone asks you about their beliefs? Do you ignore them? Just believe our group. Do not uh, believe them. Just like that? No. You prove and disprove them by the scriptures. You reason out in the scriptures. And that's what Paul did. And that's what all believers should do. That's why we go to these details. Okay, I just answered a comment uh, that was uh, given to the, my, my broadcast yesterday. So let's talk about the common ground, uh, the, all the common grounds between subordinationism and Trinitarianism. So, uh, uh, the deity of Christ. Here, the Trinity and the subordinationists believe the Son is a creator also. Although some Aryans will also say the Son is a creator also. But for uh, but uh, let's say a frontliner creator of God. But um, they also believe that Son is being is created. That's the difference. Here, the Son is a creator. The he the other side, the Son is being created, and the oneness, the oneness uh, has caught up with that revelation, that the Son is just a body of God. Uh, so, if it's it just a corporal body, just an empty shell, so the body is created by God. So, that's why the oneness, the Unitarians and the Aryans have similarities in common grounds that the Son is created only. Let's talk about calling Jesus Christ God. The Aryans teach that Christ is not God's equal. So, the oneness, the trinity, the subordinationists are common ground in saying Christ is God. But here, Christ, the Son of God, is not God's equal. Arians and Unitarians are the same with that. Their difference is, they both believe the Son is created by the Father. But, uh, what is their difference? There is a boundary there between Unitarians and Arians. Their boundary is the, the Logos. The Logos pre existence of the Son of Jesus Christ. To the Arians, he, he was not just a Logos. He literally pre previously existed. So, my term before when I made this track is literal pre existence, but a but much better term is previous existence, previous conscious existence. And Arians have common grounds with uh, subordinationists and Trinitarians that the Christ it was already there in creation. So, the Son, the Son. This is mostly in Genesis chapter one, verse twenty-six. Let us make man in our image. So, Arians, subordinationists, and Trinitarians both believe. Let us make man in our image. They, uh, God was literally talking to Christ, the Son of God, in the time of Adam. In the time of Adam. So, when Adam was about to be created. So, you see that common ground there? You can use this as a guide. So, when you talk to someone, you know what their background is. You can... You, you don't... You will not waste time over knowing what their understanding is. Because if you know which category they are, you can see which common ground you have, may have or may not have with him or her, someone you're witnessing, even in your preaching messages. So, here, um, that's a pre-existence. Here, um, for the Unitarians and the Oneness, they have similarity as a Logos pre-existence. He pre-existed as the Word of God, the plan of God, the mind of God, the Buzu, uh in the monogene, monogenes theos, the gene of God, the seed of God. So here, Logos, uh, it's just pure Logos, not yet a theophany, until the time he would be created. So the oneness have caught up with that revelation. You see, there, there uh, if one have common ground on one aspect, he may not have common ground on another aspect, but they have common ground 
on other aspects that they don't have common ground with the other. Let's say Trinity and Oneness. They have a common ground with the deity of Christ, uh, calling Jesus Christ God, but they're not common ground in its creation as a creator. They're not common ground with the Logos. But the Oneness will have common ground with the Unitarians and the Aryans in other aspects. So, you know, sometimes in a minister's meeting, we encounter the same thing. You have a minister that have uh, similar views with you, but on one subject. But when you move on to another subject, the, the minister you have the similar view with no longer shares your view. <laughs> this is funny because the, uh, your opponent on the other side who disagreed with you in that previous subject, in this new subject, he agrees with you. You see? It's similar to this. They have common grounds on one subject, on as one aspect, but they don't have. But in another aspect, they no longer co have common grounds. That they have com common grounds with others. So we have to understand this reality, especially in the Godhead, because we're witnessing them in the Godhead. We are after truth. We're not after par any particular belief system. It's also wrong just to ignore them close your minds and just spoon feed what your pastor says you tells you as a be true believer in christ you must be meticulous as you grow they are talking about growing in the in uh, from a baby christian if you want to grow as a believer you have to distinguish right from wrong you have to distinguish where they have uh, what the prophet said where they got off the beaten path where they have gotten off, where they've sidetracked. So, we're not yet talking about which one, which of these are true. What I could say is, part, all of them could be understood correctly and incorrectly. You could understand Jesus Christ as God correctly and incorrectly. You could understand the Logos correctly and incorrectly. So, this terminology... Um, even though they have some common grounds, I might agree with one or more than the other on certain subjects, but all terminologies can be understood correctly and incorrectly. Um, I have another, I, did, I was not able to make a track. I call this distinct truths. Let me write it down. Maybe in the future we can make that track. I call it the distinct truths. Brother Eric remembers this, uh, knows this. I hope she remembers this. So, every doctrine on the Godhead has distinct truths. The Trinity has some distinct truths more against the Oneness. The Oneness have some distinct truths versus the Trinity. The Arians have some distinct truths. The Subordinationists have some distinct truths. Unitarians have some distinct truths. So not all has a monopoly of truth. And what happened to the gospel during the 2nd century, 3rd century? The Godhead was the first doctrine to be mud muddled up. So, uh, it gave birth to these belief systems. So, before we talk about what is truth, we have to know what they believe in. Okay, let's continue finishing up on, on these di these distinctions um, how many levels do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4 the term co-eternal subordinationists and trinitarians both believe that the son of God Jesus Christ is a co-eternal co person, that means to say co-eternal they previously exist existed in the past Without beginning, all three of them. Now, going to the other side, the Aryans, they're not co-eternal. They had a beginning. The, one, the reason the oneness is part of this because the oneness had this revelation that the Son, there's no such thing as God the Son in the, in the Bible, but Son of God, wherein the Son of God is a body created by God to dwell into. Just a body for God to dwell in. 
So, it's just a body that God created to dwell in. And of course, for the oneness, it has already dwelt in the Son. So, uh, the, uh, the teaching of the River Jordan in dwelling is not specific here in the Christological wheel. Maybe some, some Unitarians might believe that. Some Trinitarians, some Arians. Okay, so, uh, but that's not one of the subjects listed here. So, co-eternal, so here on the other side, their common ground, the three of them, is they're not co-eternal person. Christ is not a co-eternal person. For the Arians, Unitarians, the Oneness. But for the subordinationists and the Trinitarians, they're co-eternal. Let's move to the next. We already talked about this, his pre-existence. So, here, it's cut and dry. Trinity subordinationists are common. But here, if you move on to the other side, um, they, their common ground will move on. Move off to on to what? His pre-existence. So, the Aryans will be different from these two from the pre-existence of Christ, regarding the pre-existence pre of Christ. If you move on to being a creator, again, it's cut and dry, similar to co-eternal person. If you move on to calling him God, Christ, there, um, the the about the, the borders have shifted the borders have shifted uh, and uh, subordinationist Trinitarians became common ground with the oneness so in various subjects they have common grounds and differences you just have to know them okay I'm gonna end my broadcast here I hope the subject on the wheel of prophecy I just shared that uh, you can understand that study that and rem remember the Bible's answer to that instead of human philosophy and the Christological wheel so uh, without much office assistance <laughs> no one maybe could not uh, screenshot this and place this publicly Okay, so uh, let's look at our comment section if there are questions. So, Brother Lito, we can understand Jesus as God correctly or incorrectly. Of course, because Jesus is the name of God himself. God of Hardy. G uh, God of, the name Jesus is originally er uh, no, uh, understood by... Uh, the name of Jesus is originally the name of the Father that was only given to the Son. Shout out to Sister Cassandra Bryant Johnson. Okay, no more questions here. Shout out to Brother Ms. Sozi Chikafa and Brother Richard Anana. Okay. Moses Elijah Lagat. Shout out to them. Greetings in the name of the Lord. Okay, there are no more comments here. So I think we've come to the end of our broadcast. So there are no more questions. And there's no more no phone calls. So um, I'm gonna... Those in the messenger, listening in through messenger. Uh, Bar Jerry as the host. Maybe if he heard some questions there, he can type it here, because we are not yet uh, we are not yet uh, expert in how to put in the voice. I know, the video. I know how to insert it here, but not the voice. So let's uh, pray. Uh, Give a uh, let's pray uh, for the 
closing of our morning devotion. Lord, thank you for this uh, time that you have given us. That thank you, Lord, for this uh, glorious opportunity to study the Word. Truly, all your hidden mysteries, the vastness of your uh, thoughts are too awesome for us. But Lord, make us grow in spirit, in our soul, in our body, as we grow physically healthy. Give us uh, spiritual health, our souls and spirit. Uh, give us our daily bread that every day that we could uh, subsist on your word, not as we subsist on material things. Lord, bless uh, every listener. Give us many questions. Give us hunger and thirst for your righteousness, for your plans. We long to see you. We long to meet you, Lord. We long to be with you, Lord. So, Lord, uh, prepare us for the rapture. Prepare us to meet you, Lord, through thy word. Uh, strengthen each and every family, Lord. Every family that is weak, that is uh, growing lukewarm, Lord, that is uh, being influenced by the world. Every parent, Lord, every elder in the church, not just in our church, but in every other local churches um, that are truly loving your word. Give us anointing. Give us uh, your presence. Give us a conviction to, to grow more in your revelatory word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for all the revelations. Thank you for this glorious opportunity, a, a, a privilege, Lord. A privilege to praise Thee, a privilege to know Thee, a privilege to speak for Thee, to be Your ambassadors, to be Your representatives, to represent Thee. Though most of the times we are not worthy, we, we shame You, Lord, because of our weaknesses, because of our failures, because of our self-righteousness. But Lord, forgive us cleanse us make us worthy lord if we if we do not understand anything make us understand lord make us to know you more give us this hunger lord we might be worshiping you in a carnal way in a traditional way lord lord do not allow it to be so lord help us lord worship you in spirit and in truth all these things we ask and pray in the mighty name of your beloved son jesus christ amen Amen. So, um, please comment what subject you wish to be tackled tomorrow. Um, preferably the Godhead. So, other topics regarding the Godhead. Although we have lots of topics regarding the Godhead, but I wish you to ask question. And... Um, Comment in the comment section the subject you wish us to discuss tomorrow regarding the Godhead. And uh, we'll be back here again same time tomorrow. Please invite many listeners. Even after this broadcast, share this video and uh, uh, to other groups and other friends and other foreigners. Invite listeners tomorrow. See you again same time tomorrow in this uh, uh, Facebook group, Kogeo End Time Series. God bless you all.